job in the Czech Republic where the family will move in about a week's time in order for the family to stay together. When I take weddings and meet the couples and I, I have to you know, have a serious conversation with them about the prospects of them remaining together. And it saddens me when I have to be asking people, what is your income? The family migration rules strike me as completely unjust. Uh, to put a, a language requirement and also to put an income requirement on couples who want to be married or are married seems to be completely, you know, against natural justice. I haven't seen my husband for a year. He's missed, her, he's missed her first birthday, he's missed her first steps, her first words. It's just, it's horrible. He should be here for all these moments. I shouldn't have to be on Skype to, so he can see her blow out her candles on her first birthday and stuff like that. I'm surprised, particularly with Conservative government, because I thought they, they were in favour of the family. But here I am in a marriage, but my wife is away from me and we want to start a family but obviously we're not able to right now. It's a strange feeling that the, in your own country your sort of family's broken up and I may even have to leave my own country to be with her. I might have to go and live in Peru. We applied for our visa in January 2014. Um, it's been refused. I currently work two jobs. One is a full-time security job uh, it's a nine-hour shift, sometimes 12, all day on my feet. I, mean, I just know from personal experiences and I know from talking to adults who are separated from their parents as children that it's traumatic and, and the trauma lives on throughout people's lives. And that this government should be um, causing that kind of trauma for the future is, I think, um, horrendous and uh, a shame on, on the UK, to be honest. In 2012, very significant changes to the rules on family migration came into force. The change primarily requires British citizens to now earn £18,600 a year in order to be able to sponsor the entry of their non-European husband, wife or partner. I've lost all of my hair, I'm wearing a wig. I've had to take antidepressants for so long, I've put on an awful lot of weight to the point where I hate myself because of that. I've had to have therapy. My children can't sleep. We have bad nights sleep almost every night with them crying for daddy. In 2012, um, I'd been living in Turkey for more than 20 years and we were running a sustainable tourism company in the southeast of Turkey. Happy life, two children, several properties in Turkey that were ours that we rented out. And then my mother died of cancer quite suddenly. I came back to the UK with the children for two weeks. I only bought enough luggage with me for two weeks. Why your daddy's not here? Because he hasn't got a visa and the immigration law say no. And there's something called a Syria board and Syrian people are um, fighting Turkey. They're not chopping daddy's head off, but they're chopping some other people's heads off, I think. We still continue to have a business and still have an income, but by September 2014, when ISIS invaded Kobani on the Turkish-Syrian border, the business was then collapsing as the area became unsafe for travel. With pressure on all sides, with pressure with the Kurdish issue, with pressure from ISIS, and finally British immigration, which refused my husband any more visitors visas, we became completely stuck. We lost everything financially. We couldn't see each other anymore. I couldn't think about moving back to Turkey. And my husband couldn't even come on a week's holiday. non 
the EU partners are prohibited from receiving any benefits for the first five years at least of their time in the UK and during that period they are able to work and so pay into the social security system through their taxes. In actual fact the, it, it's likely that most non-EU partners make an overall contribution to the welfare system in the UK rather than being any cost at all to them. I think one of the cruel ironies of the rules is that they will generate and are generating greater costs to the public purse in the UK. Families who are secure and are able to live together are much more likely to be independent and self-sufficient financially. When you have two people who are here who are able to earn, you're much less likely to have recourse to, to benefits or other forms of welfare support. It just seems to be totally punitive. If we'd have moved 12 months earlier back to the UK, we wouldn't have had a problem. As it is, we're coming up to being married for 17 years with two children aged 11 and 15 who have been separated um, because of laws sneaked in by the, by the UK government in 2012. I'm a fluent Russian speaker. I understand and know Russian history quite well. But other than that, I'm not a financist. I don't work in the oil business. For me to go back there, it would be extremely difficult to find employment. I work uh, part-time for a local deli, doing a sandwich round and working with them on the business development site. Um, another string to my bow is working with the a local clay pigeon shooting school. Let's just hope I can hit something, eh? I've come here to work to set up my own business that can be of benefit to our family and of benefit to the local community. I bring in lots of overseas tourists who spend money here in the tourist off-season. If I'm forced to be living on my own with my two daughters, then that's out of the question. I physically would not be able to do that. The government, I think they're thinking that they're helping people, like you need to have this certain, certain amount of money, but it's not their problem. With the separation thing, they just don't understand that people are not happy emotionally. Maybe they'll have enough money to survive and stuff. Maybe they'll have enough money to go like, and, like buy some luxury things or something, but they won't be happy emotionally because part of the family are missing. We decided who would live with whom really is the, the least worst scenario um, of being either all four of us based in Moscow or all four of us having an uncertain future in the UK. My wife, if she'd wanted to get a UK passport, could have had one by now. She's lived in the UK for about five years, but we didn't get married so that she could get a UK passport. In fact, if she'd have been the type of person to marry me for a passport, I wouldn't have looked twice at her. <laughs> I miss my husband and I miss my daughter. And um, as I said, it's not uh, it's not um, easy, but uh, and I think it's very cruel. Of course I want to live in Wales because uh, it's, uh, it is really very painful um, to know that um, you can't um, be with your husband and your daughter. We have their lovely house and uh, this is motherland for my husband. And my mother-in-law, she wanted very much when she was alive. She always told me that uh, she wants us. She left this house for our family and she wanted to us to be like a family and live in this house. And this is my daddy, this is my granddaddy, and this is my grandmother. Um, I like uh, be with my dad and sisters, sister because I love uh, my dad and my sister. She can't understand why we need to live like that and uh, 
uh, why she can't be with her daddy. In my opinion, it's against human rights. You know, we all got human rights to be together like a family, to have children with us, to see children, how they're growing up. You know, the British government, they always talking about this. They caring about uh, uh, family lives. And if they really dis, um, caring about us, they must change this law because it's against our families. But nobody can say now what will happen in reality now. But I, I always hoping uh, it would be um, happy end for our family. I think there was no application of common sense when these rules were drafted. They've set an arbitrary figure of £18,600 throughout the UK, whether you live in central London, whether you live in a small town in Wales like I do. I'm lucky enough to own my own house um, and we have no outstanding debts at all. I'd be able to survive with my family quite comfortably on 18600 or less, but that seems to be the the figure that's been plucked out of thin air um, and applied throughout the UK for anybody wishing to move back. Well this is the problem with the current rules, that they really don't allow families to properly reflect the full range of resources that, that are available to them. And property is a very good example of that. You can be a homeowner, um, own your property outright, have no mortgage repayments, but that cannot be reflected in your application. Well, that simply doesn't make sense. That's a huge discrepancy in the resources that are available to you. The case really wasn't made at all as to whether non-European family members generate any costs for the welfare state in the UK. It's an ironic feature of the rules as they stand at the moment in that European Union citizens have greater rights to bring their non-European family members to live with them in the UK than British citizens do. My mum and dad taught me when I was a kid, never say if, say when. And an ordinary little person like me has achieved so much in my life. I've always said when, and I've always got there. But now, for the first time in my life, I have to use both those words. It has now become, if they take him away, that is when I'm going on hunger strike. I've never had to use those two words together before. He protected me through sick and thin. He, he went through everything with me and he is my life. He, 22 years now, we've been together and we can't bear the sort of living apart. If I lose him, that's the end of me. Put it that way, that is the end of me. I can, how can anybody say goodbye to somebody that they love with all their heart? Um, got married very young, had two children, always dreamt about having my own horse and a riding stables and eventually achieved that. Um, and I had a busy ride in stables out in Malden, the Surrey, for 22 years. In the last five years of that, um, unfortunately, my marriage became a very, very violent one. And I vowed that as soon as my eldest daughter had left home, I would get out of that situation. And in the meantime, I had met, um, well, in Ireland, when I was there buying horses, and we became friends. I don't know, somehow I got on with life and um, I met some wonderful, wonderful people. Um, but all that time, I just wanted the day to come that I would go home. We've been playing in this forever, long, long, long time. You know, I've came back and forth many times and we've always planned on when my kids were gone. And well, the main thing was when her, her ex passed away, is to come here so she could spend the rest of her years that she's got left with her kids and grandchildren. So I just sold my tools and got rid of my business and sold the house, all my, all my belongings, everything that we put together the last 20 years. Nobody has considered what I went through, 
what my family went through, what my children, my grandchildren have gone through. How can they say that coming back to be your, with your family is a matter of convenience? Even if the law hadn't changed, how could it be conven just convenience? What about the human need to spend your last few years with, the, with your family? Well, what I know is that uh, she and her husband, Walter, have been married for a very long period of time, over 20 years, uh, that they lived in America. However, Sally has some uh, significant health problems. They, they came back to the UK uh, and uh, unfortunately they've fallen foul of the rules in terms of spousal income. Um, it was in March 2011. Um, my daughter phoned me and she said, Mum, you know, it's, it's okay to come home now. Um, so I put the house on the market that day. I went online two or three days later to find out what we needed to do for him to get his immigration status here. Um, and I printed out the page and it said you had to be married four years or more and prove that you were in um, a solid relationship. We didn't know the law was going to change. I had absolutely no idea. When you looked online in, 2000, in March of 2011, it laid out what you needed to do to become a resident in this country. And it was not us that applied for a visitor's visa. We were told that that's what was done by the solicitor. This is levothyroxine. Um, this is the tablet that is the hormone replacement. I have a very, very bad lung problem. Uh, right now, I'm just getting over a little thing of bronchial pneumonia. Oh, um, so I can't go anywhere without my inhalers. Invastin, because my cholesterol for some reason was very, very low, uh, very, very high, and I'm not a candidate. Well, who's going to take care of her? But, but I have and she needs me. So I mean, that, one thing they not getting through her head that when she had her cancer at her age, when she had the thyroid removed, their life is expectancy is only 12 years. What's well, been seven, almost eight now. She's only got few more years left. So I do all the cooking, the cleaning, the washing, the scrubbing the floors. I mean, I take care of her. I mean, in and out of the tub, she can't get in and out of the tub without me worrying about her falling, so I help her in and out. And why would you pay the government here, pay somebody else to take care of her when I'm her husband and I should do it anyways? I don't see how that can happen when they have, you know, like tons of photos of us when we were on our honeymoon in Hawaii, uh, our, the sale of our house, which is in both our names, our bank statements, our marriage certificates. What else, what more do they need? Oh, so I'm gonna give up 22 years of life with a man that I, is my life to be replaced by somebody that's given 15 minutes a day to help me, well, who's going to pick me up in the middle of the night when I've fallen over? Who's going to remind me to take my medication every day? Who's going to help me get dressed? I can't, I'm sorry, I can't do it. I, I accept that there needs to be a, a figure, there needs to be a, a level of income that there has to be in a household. Uh, however, I think what there also needs to be uh, within the system is some flexibility and some compassion. And I think this is one of those examples, Sally and Walter, where a couple who have been together for as long as they have, married for as long as they have, clearly uh, in a, a long-lasting uh, relationship where Walter is really key to providing the care that Sally needs, uh, that in cases like this, some compassion and flexibility should be shown by the Home Office. different country like Ireland and we moved to Ireland so when we moved to Ireland daddy could come 
I'm going to do what I wanted to do in England with Daddy. So in Ireland I can do whatever I want with Daddy and with Lulu and with Mummy. So all together like a family. Çok güzel eşimi tekrar çocuklarımı görmem benim için çok iyi. Ben çok sevindim buraya da. Yani şu anda çok mutluyum. Çocuklarımı, eşimi, ailemi tekrar gördüğüm için. Ee, yani ancak bir insanın ailesinden e, bu şekilde kopartılması gerçekten çok yanlış bir şey. Ve e, çok çalıştık buraya gelmek için. Şu anda buradayız, mutluyuz. Coming to Ireland, they are so happy to be with their father. They, they're different children. Lulu um, was acting like a baby. Um, we'd had reports from school about it, about the fact she always went into a baby role. She wanted to be cuddled and loved all the time. And since we arrived in Ireland and we're with Daddy, it's completely gone. She's not even coming to me for cuddles. İngiltere de çok iş yapabilirim, girişimciliğimi kullanabilirim. Ee, da aktif olabilirim. İngiltere'deki imkanlar çok daha fazla e, Türkiye'deki imkanlara göre. E, eminim ki çok daha iyi şeyler başarabilirim İngiltere'de. All the time that I've been in the UK, I've not been working. Also not been claiming benefits for most of it because my husband was looking after me. If my husband had been allowed into the UK, I would have been working long ago. I would have been contributing to the state. As soon as I've arrived in Ireland and my husband is with me, I'm starting work in a week. So three weeks after entering Ireland, I have a job and I'll be contributing to the state. Benim tek şeyim dürüst bir şekilde çalışıp hiçbir kimseye yük olmadan kendi yükümü kendimi taşımak isterim. I don't know what the future holds. I've no idea. We have to apply for Irma to continue to stay here and as long as I'm working, that's absolutely fine. He should be able to stay here under European law. But how can we say what will happen? This isn't my home as lovely as it is, and it isn't his home. The UK government should be looking at how it can make its rules fairer for British citizens, um, who are clearly disadvantaged in comparison to their European counterparts. Mm -hmm.